I am Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we are discussing Geekarella by Ashley Poston. Geekarella is our April Book Explosion Book of the Month. This month we've been working with Quirk Books. I am so excited about this book. It was so good. I finished it yesterday and I was on such a book high afterward and I wanted to film this and by the time I had gotten ready to film, my freaking neighbor was having a party. It was too loud for me to film. So here I am a day later. So if you don't know, it's a Cinderella retelling and I think I'm gonna confidently say this is my favorite Cinderella retelling I've ever watched or read and I know like Throne of Glass is supposedly a Cinderella retelling, but like it's not really. It was, it's really different. And so I'm not counting that. We hit all the Cinderella points in Geekarella. So this is like a real Cinderella retelling, but also it's like the best and the coolest and my favorite one. I love it. It was like when I read Fangirl, this hit me in different ways than Fangirl did, but like it was like I felt understood in the way you feel when you read Fangirl. And that's the first time I felt really like that since I've read Fangirl, which was back in like 2013. Our lead character is Elle. Her dad has died, but when he was alive, he loved the show Starfield. And he used to watch it all the time with Elle. And he started his own convention, Excelsicon. And her dad used to be a cosplayer and it's wonderful. And now she lives with her stepmom and her two stepsisters and like they don't get along. And she runs a Starfield blog. And the start of the book, they're just about to announce who has been casted in the rebooted movie version of the show. Cause the show was on in the nineties. So she's only watched it from reruns and such. And so the lead is casted, who is Elle's favorite character. And he's this actor from an OC like show that no one takes seriously. And there's so many teen fans that are like obsessed with his abs and she is not pleased. We switch back and forth between two point of views in this book. And we also see from Darian's point of view, who is that actor. And turns out Darian actually is a huge Star Gunner fan as well. There there is an uproar when he is casted from like the hardcore Starfield fans and he is very upset about this. He's scheduled to show up at Excelsicon, which is her father's con, but like he's afraid to go because he thinks he's gonna be ripped apart by the fans and his manager is making him go. So he tries to get in contact with the con. The last known number is her dad's cell phone and when her dad died, her stepmom just gave the cell phone to Elle because she didn't want to buy her own cell phone. And so begins the mystery ship between Elle and Darian. Elle, Darian. If you haven't read the book, or even if you have read the book, you should check out the book trailer for Geekerella because I have a little baby cameo in it. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. That's all I'm gonna say in the non-spoilery section because like everything else, it's so funny because like, you know, you have seen so many other Cinderella stories. So like my mind kept flashing to the Hilary Duff version because that's the one that I would say it's most like it because it's like, very modern and there is texting involved. But, well that's like really like high school centric. This is very fandom centric and it was so wonderful and so cute. I'm gonna give Geek Girl a five out of five stars, obviously. I give it a 95 on my percent scale. Also, it's freaking gorgeous. I felt so bad about reading this in the shower, <laughs> but I had to because I wanted to keep reading it. It's like really nice. This is the inside and then there's more nice. This is the next page. Page. And like the page quality is like super high. Like, wait till you feel it. Wait till you feel it. Go pick it up, read it, come back, and we can discuss it together. Goodbye, non spoilery peeps. Okay, first, I love the way her friendship formed with Sage. I'll just really hardcore judge Sage and even Cal right off the bat, thinking that like they don't like her because she has this complex where she thinks she's like not good enough to be liked and no one cares about her. It's so great to see her forming these connections with the people around her that she didn't even realize she could be making. I love that Sage is a fashion designer. Like, it was like so obvious that she was gonna be the fairy godmother to make her the outfit. And I was just like, Elle, stop trying to make that stupid jacket yourself from the YouTube tutorial. <laughs> She's right there. And I love Sage's mom. I love that Sage is like, show me the show. And she's like, you you wanna you wanna watch it? It's the reason we're making this, right? <laughs> We've all had that experience where you try to get someone to watch your favorite show and they're like not as into it as you are, but you're still excited because you want them to like it, you know. And like it's hard to watch it with them sometimes because you have all these expectations and you have all these feelings and you don't want to push them one way or another. You want to like see how they react. And I loved her text to Darian about it. It was just 
great. I love the cosplay aspect of it. I love that her parents met on a Starfield line. I love that her mom was like a professional cosplayer and they were like famous in the cosplay world of Starfield. It's so cool. And that they met, I'm pretty sure it was when they met and her dad was like, I hear the observation deck's nice this time of year. <laughs> this is so cute. I love that memory, that memory that Elle has of her parents just waltzing around in the living room dressed in their cosplay. It's just so sweet. And I was wondering, you know, are we gonna hit all the Cinderella marks, right? Because they're working so hard on this cosplay. And I'm like, but this is, it's gonna go to shit. <laughs> this cosplay is not gonna make it. We get that fake out with the dog taking the cosplay. Like how the hell did that dog get the cosplay? But then it's fine. And then she tries on the cosplay finish and she's like, there's something off about it. And we know for sure she's gonna be wearing her mom's dress. Like as soon as she found her mom's dress, I was like, oh my God, I forgot about Ever After. That is also one of my favorite Cinderella stories. Okay, this is my favorite red story. Ever After is my favorite watched Cinderella story. I can't choose. I can't choose because I love that one too. I forgot it existed. I was just remembering when she found her mom's dress and it's so beautiful and she wears it. So anyway, I was expecting her to wear her mom's dress and I knew that Sage had took it. But I liked that there was kind of a twist to it because she ended up wearing like a mishmash of both her parents' costumes, which was beautiful. So we get to the con. She goes to like the customer service area. She immediately knows the lady. She's like, um, you never need to buy a ticket. Your dad freaking started the con. And here I am thinking this the entire time. Time. Like, does she, can't she just go? Like, isn't this her family's thing? Like, she started it. I think she should just be able to walk in. It was heartbreaking when her stupid sister ripped up her freaking tickets and tore apart her costume. It just hurt that someone that close to you would do something like that. It felt ridiculously crazy, her hiding spot for those tickets, but I think we've all had those moments where we were really scared that our siblings was gonna, like, steal something that was ours and break it or lose it. And so, like, I was so on the same page with really intensely hiding the tickets and stupid Chloe just like found them after five seconds. What the fuck? Back to the con. So she gets to the con, she meets Darian, they yell at each other. It's great. One of my favorite scenes in the book, this is the scene that brought me to tears, was when she was in the bathroom and they were trying to like fix her hair and they couldn't get it right and they didn't have a crown. And the girl recognizes her from her blog. One of the girls in the bathroom and tells her how much she loves it and she knows that her dad started this con and she gives her her crown. And then Sage asks if she can get her like starfield wings. The girl disappears appears and comes back with like 10 other cosplayers and they're all just like giving her pieces of their costumes because they're so grateful for this con and how it's changed their lives and made them feel like they belong and it was so beautiful and I'm just sitting there like I this is just <laughs> And then of course I love the scene at the cosplay ball with Darian when that asshole Knox that turned out to be his friend was picking on her and being like, you're a fake fan. Those people. And then Darian stands up for her and she's like, I didn't need you to stand up for me. And then they go outside and like, it's just so cute. When her sister Chloe comes and tries to insult her by spewing that she's a geeky nerd who's obsessed with Starfield. I'm just like, are you kidding me right now? Like, do you know where you are? Do you think you're in like a high school? school dance right now? Cause you're not. Know your audience. Darian does the Starfield salute and then everyone around him does the salute and Elle does the salute and it's kind of like her approving Darian as the new Commodore. It's a beautiful moment. I love that like it wasn't a huge mystery who Elle was. I love that he found out there on the dance floor and that we know so much about her. Like we know she came with this magic pumpkin from Charleston. We're gonna be able to find her. It's not gonna be a huge deal where we have to try the shoe on 50 people. Because that is my least favorite part of Cinderella. It always gave me so much anxiety. Like, that shoe could fit someone else. People have the same size feet. I can't deal with this. How do you not recognize what the girl you were dancing with looks like? Oh my god, my heart when they came to the country club looking for Elle and Sage just busted around the fence blasting the Starfield theme song like the trumpets of war. What a great sentence. And they're out in the back like on the golf course. Elle hears the rumbling of the food truck and then the Starfield theme and then Darian comes out of the truck and it's just everything. The next time I cried was reading the acknowledgements which were beautiful. So
so well said. The power of fandom, that line about the stars hollow and muggle, I just, everything on here is perfection. And then like topped off with that Notting Hill line, because in the end we're all just a bunch of weirdos standing in front of other weirdos asking for their username. And I love seeing Darian on set and his experience being Carmen Dora, the fans from his point of view, and then seeing the juxtaposition of how Jess looks at the fans. And I love that I didn't prefer like one point of view to the other. I didn't care whose point of view I was in. I was just like, I want you guys to text, text, te every time I was like, oh, a text is coming up. I got so excited. <laughs> Please share your thoughts and favorite parts. I'm Christine. I make videos every Tuesday. I'm at Xtinemate on Twitter and Instagram. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.